Reamer, welcome back to T-Town. I hope all is well, man. Hey, Ryan, what's going on? Glad to be back on. Man, it's good to have you to be back on, and, and I, I hate that uh, we got you on to kind of break down a lot of different things, but let me just do the good, the bad, the ugly. Nick Saban generally does that with his team on Monday following uh, the big win. It's the good, bad, the ugly. Can you give us the good, the bad, the ugly from your perspective? Well, there's definitely a lot of things that uh, we liked out of uh, out of what we saw on uh, on Saturday coming into a hostile environment. It's a tough place to play, but uh, one of the best things I saw was getting off to a fast start, making a quick early drive, a fast minute and a half down the field, get the ball in the end zone, try to fly the crowd. Uh, that's always a good start. And then uh, continuing the theme with what we've seen all year from these receivers and, uh, and Tua, uh, get the ball in these guys' hands, and they're going to make big plays. Um, you know, some of the bad things that we saw was uh, we gave up a lot of yards on offense. Uh, I mean, on defense, excuse me. And, uh, you know, there's definitely some things that we're going to be able to to teach from this film and hopefully get to clean up, getting some of these younger guys some experience, uh, some more experience, some SEC experience in a, in a tough place to play. Uh, got us in some situations where it looks like we uh, – weren't really as clear on the communication or understood exactly what our uh, role was supposed to be on some of these uh, route breakdowns. Uh, so there's definitely some room for improvement in that area. But uh, And then, obviously, the, the talk of the season so far has been our, our run, uh, our rushing offense. And I know Coach David hit on it in his press conference. There's definitely some, some more uh, improvements that we can continue to make. I think what he was talking about was it wasn't that we – had any bad runs we ran the ball well we didn't uh we had a, a very imbalanced offense i guess is what he was talking about so you know when you got to when you put your defense on the field for 80 plus plays a game that it, it's going to be exhausting so hopefully we can find ways to combat that to give these guys a break and and uh and keep them off the field for so long you know i, I know they talked about it on the uh, television side of things the broadcast but uh from a second level player being an outside backer when you look at that RPO, how much, how unfair is it for the second level guys <laughs> to, to have to read run and it's a passing play? Yeah, it's, it just adds a whole other element to playing defense. You know, you've got, you know, basic defensive uh, fundamentals is you've got your reads, your, your pre snap reads, and then your reads once the ball is snapped, kind of telling you exactly what the offense is about to give you. And when you've got to sit there and, and, even after the ball snap, you're still trying to figure out if they're going to be running the ball or throwing the ball. It's, it's. Uh, I'm glad I'm not a, a defensive player with the RPO being around. Not that it's anything that's new that's been around for a while, but it's definitely more predominant now in today's offenses that you see. And, you know, it's, it's tough, especially when you've got safeties that are supposed to be coming up and playing run support or whether it's your corners coming up and playing run support and setting the edge. It, it puts them in a tough a tough spot because you you got to come off your guy and uh and hopefully you're making the right call because you're that means you're leaving somebody out there that can that can still catch a pass so uh it's it's very difficult um it's definitely you know that's just today's college football and football in general is we're very uh offensive offensively driven and like to see big plays like to see a lot of points being scored it makes it even tougher for these defensive guys to really know exactly what they're supposed to be doing. It, it makes them think a little bit more and hesitate and sometimes puts them in bad spots. You know, you get caught coming up and, and trying to shut down the run and then all of a sudden you got a ball flow, flying over your head and there's not much you can do about it. Hopefully somebody's going to be back there to make a stop and get to play another down. We're talking to Corey Raymer, former outside backer at the University of Alabama. When you miss as many tackles as, as we missed on Saturday, what do you have to go back the next week in practice and kind of clean that up? Is it simply – uh, is it fundamentals? Is it angles? A combination? What What was so many missed tackles on Saturday? Yeah, you know, it's hard to say is that there's any one reason why we had uh, had so many missed tackles. I think South Carolina, you got to give them credit. They're one of the top rushing defenses. Uh, I mean, rushing uh, offenses in in the league and in the country, and we knew it was going to be tough for us to to go in and shut those shut those guys down. Uh, and you got to give credit to Rico Dowler. He really got after it uh, from a running back. He's a tough guy to bring down. You got to get a bunch of guys swarming to the ball. And, uh, and it's not that it's not too far away from camp where we just went through a bunch of the fundamentals. So uh, it's it's just something that's uh, an effort deal. You got to get there and wrap up. And you see so many guys today, not that we were a uh, victim of this, but just coming up and trying to throw shoulders into people without 
uh, really wrapping up. And then, you know, too, another thing is that it's, it's hard to play defense from another standpoint and that you're going to, you got to be very, very careful of how you come in to make tackles these days. Cause like we saw at the very end of the game, uh, you get a targeting call and next thing you know, you're sitting out for the next, the first half of the next game. Corey, when you look at Tua Tungvaluwa, obviously off to a really fast start. He's went, already went over 1,000 yards. We talk about passing yards. I mean, he's just it, – it just it's fun to watch him throw the football. I'm just curious, how do you think defenses are going to try to choose to throw things at him in the coming weeks? I mean, Southern Miss, Ole Miss may not have the personnel, but you got to go to Texas A&M, LSU, Mississippi State. Uh, those games are going to be difficult. They got a good defense. Auburn certainly on the road. What are, what are defensive coordinators going to try to do to try to knock him off his game? Yeah, I think the you know the thing that you've seen a lot of, uh, especially early on in this game, we saw uh, some extra pressures coming in and trying to get the ball out of his hand as quickly as possible. Obviously, you don't want him to sit back there uh, and have all day if you're a defensive coordinator trying to game plan for for him, but. You've also got a lot of weapons that you've got to figure out how to defend too, because it's not just a, a one receiver here. It's it's you know everybody that's on offense is a threat to to make a big play. So uh, you're 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 probably looking at trying to figure out how to guard these guys one on one, which you think is going to be an advantage for us when anybody tries to play man to man coverage uh, or cover zero and no over the top help, and then also try to bring some more pressure uh, out of, outside of your front three or four guys. If you're going to bring some extra guys, you're going to leave some holes in the defenses uh, for Tua to be able to sit back there and take them apart. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a – Tua is just a – it's been impressive how accurate he's been uh, with throwing the ball and, and making, making plays with his feet, getting outside the box, and really distributing the ball extremely well to different guys. Uh, it's going to be uh, – you're going to see some defenses that are – I think you're you're going to have to really uh, hope that you've got some – if you can get pressure with a limited amount of people not having to bring, you know, five or six people at a time, if you can if you can find ways to get pressure with three or four guys up front, it's going to be the best chance you've got uh, to, to really slow them down because, like I said, you try to play man-to-man uh, against these receivers that we have and Devontae Smith and Ruggs and Judy and everybody else. And then you got Najee Harris coming out of the backfield catching passes too. It's there's a lot of uh there's a lot of options for him and he sees the field so well. Uh and he, he knows exactly where his quick reads are and, and when to get the ball out. So you you try to get to him as fast as you can from a defensive standpoint, uh, but it's not exactly the easiest so there's not a, a a quick fix or an easy game plan that's really uh, it's really going to shut him down because he's a talented guy. Corey, a, another injury uh, on that defensive front. LeBron Ray still going to be some evaluation. Nick Saban said earlier today that he would be out at least one game. The expectation is that he's going to be out more than that. They're still trying to evaluation. Another starter going down. I mean, this is something that you're going to have to find a way to somebody to step up. You've got some young defensive linemen, but, I mean, you're throwing in the fire uh, in the SEC when you throw in a new player there. Uh, LeBron Ray, this just continue – it's a continuation with this injury front. I, I don't know what it is, the injury cycle here, but I wish we'd find a way to get out of it and give it to somebody else or get it away from here. Uh, but another player going down. Another new player will have to be stepping up into a bigger responsibility against Southern Miss and Ole Miss and moving forward. Yeah, you know, it's – it's uh the injury bug sometimes it, it comes in ways and right now we just seem to have it you know LeBron was he was somebody that had some injuries going into camp so it's something that's been bothering him for a while and unfortunately uh had it flare up again on him hopefully uh the MRI and everything comes back and uh, get, get some good news from that be able to get him healed up and get him on the field because we especially like I said earlier when you're when you're having your defense on the field as much as we had this past game it's going to happen. Guys are going to get worn down. You're not going to be able to give them much rest uh, sitting on the sideline, and and that's when that's when the most injuries occur is when you're going out there and you're tired and and you're dragging, and that's when that's when some of these things happen. And I think that's why Coach Saban wants to see some of our uh, our offensive play calling or, or distribution of uh, run to pass uh, kind of even things out to try to give those guys on defense a little bit more rest on the sideline. You know, it's great. It's hard to hard to tell guys that I to not get into the sure. end zone when the ball gets in their hands and we're just scoring very quickly and it's working out, you know, extremely well from an offensive standpoint, but 
uh, you know, we've got to we've got to find the next guy to step up. You know, that's always been Coach Davin's philosophy: is when somebody goes down, you got to be the, you got to be ready to go whenever your number's called. So, some of these younger guys are getting going to get thrown into the mix a lot earlier than they probably expected to. And and Coach Davin's expectations are are definitely that it's not going to be any drop off. Uh, we got a lot of talent down there, and hopefully, somebody will will be uh, that guy that steps up and becomes a playmaker for us. Hey, Corey, I'm just kind of curious what you've seen with the younger guys, Shane Lee and Christian Harris. And Ali Kao got a lot of playing time on Saturday as they were throwing a lot of things at Alabama. Uh, he got some reps at the wheel. What do you see there from those youngsters? Yeah, you know, it's, I think uh, Coach David hit on it as well, too. It's uh, Whenever you've got two young guys out there, uh, usually when we've had this situation in the past, we've had to put some freshmen on the field. They've been surrounded by a, a senior that's next to them or a junior that's got some experience that can help them out, understand exactly what they're supposed to be doing. But you got two guys out there that are uh, being thrown into the mix, having to call plays and get everybody lined up. It's a tough job to have, and I think they've done extremely well. I think uh, we saw a little bit of some confusion with uh, uh, between those two guys uh, during some of the some of the ways that we some of the looks that we saw. Not that we weren't expecting them, but uh, you know, trying to figure out exactly how you're going to break. You know, when all these groupings of wide receivers get lined up in bunches and then they break out, you've got to know exactly how you're going to how things are going to unfold and which guys you're going to be taking. Uh, and Coach David even talked about it too. You know, we we've kind of had to make make things simple so they don't have to think so much. So they can go out there and play. And hopefully, you know, after a week like this, they can get into adding more calls to the defense that they're comfortable with, and they understand exactly what checks they're supposed to be making uh, and who they're supposed to be covering, uh, and and where they can go out there and play fast and not have to think so much. But overall, I think they've done a great job. You know, it's a it's a tough place to you know put those guys in to, to go out there and, and only be on campus for less than a year and they're starting in a big environment in the SEC conference that's already tough and it was good to see KO get out there and get some reps as well because he's a talented linebacker we all know he is and so hopefully uh, and he's been there he's been there you know he's he's had he's got a little bit more experience uh, and hopefully they can find a combination of those three guys who Coach Saban and the rest of the defense can rely on to go out there and not make mistakes because that's a that's a big part of what Coach Saban preaches is we're going to put the guys that we can rely on to know what they're supposed to be doing uh, and and can play fast and and everybody else that's on the field can rely on them to do what they're supposed to do because uh, it, it can break down very quickly and, and guys can be running wide open and, and big plays happen that way. Corey Reamer, you'll hear him tonight starting at 6 o'clock here on the flagship station of Alabama Crimson Tide football. It is Crimson Tide Rewind, Eli Gold. Corey Reamer breaking down all the action uh, with college football, including the University of Alabama. That begins 6 o'clock around the network here locally in Tuscaloosa on Tide 100.9. If you listen outside of the area, uh, we also have the streaming rights, so you can listen to us online on the app, and you can listen to everything that Corey uh, will bring it there. Where are you guys going to be live at again? Corey, I, I forget the location. Yeah, we're at Baumhauer's in, in Hoover over by uh, in Patton Creek. Yeah, right there uh, on Highway 150. If you're in the area, yeah. Right off of Highway 150, yeah. Eli and I will be there uh, tonight uh, breaking down uh, this past week's game and looking forward to uh, Southern Miss. Well, no doubt. Listen, we love the analysis. We appreciate you for being a part of the show, and we'll see you very, very soon, Corey. Thank you, sir. Hey, thanks, Ryan. Have a good one.